Welcome back to Medieval Dynasty. In this video, I'm going to cover something that could be controversial. That's making money. In fact, it's going to be about making money the best way. There are a lot of resources available online, most of which don't even touch on the most important element of the game, which is time. The one resource that I found was a spreadsheet. Pretty nice spreadsheet. Unfortunately, most of the information in it is outdated now. It's just simply too old. So, I had to start from scratch. I had to make my own. I tried to use resources provided from some of the other spreadsheets that were available. But they, too, also were inaccurate and wrong. But before we get too far into the weeds here, let me just say that I understand if you don't really care the why or the how or the what for. You just want the numbers, and I appreciate it. That's why I've made a TLDR section, a chapter, that you can switch to now, and you can just get to the nitty-gritty numbers. What is it that actually makes the most money in Medieval Dynasty? There's also going to be a URL so that you can get a copy of the spreadsheet yourself. Have on hand and use at your leisure. In return, I only ask that you like the video, and subscribe to the channel if you're interested both of which really help out a lot. So let's get started talking about some of these details, the how and the why. The most important resource that we have in Medieval Dynasty is time. The time it takes for us to gather resources, the time that it takes to craft specific items, and the time that it takes for us to actually trade those items. This is something that is neglected in every single resource, except for one that I have found. Instead, they focus on the value of the raw resources, and they compare it to the value of the item being crafted. As if it matters. But in truth, it doesn't. Nobody playing Medieval Dynasty is actually buying any raw resources. You're not buying sticks and stones. You're not buying leather in most cases. You're gathering it. Therefore, you're spending your time. And when a popular YouTube channel recommends you spend your early game making wooden spoons, they're wrong. And I want to tell you why right now. A wooden spoon is made with a stick. A stick is worth 0.1 coin. A wooden spoon is worth 1.5. Surely, that makes sense. You've taken the value of a stick and multiplied it by 15 by making it a spoon. But the spoon takes two seconds to make, and when you compare that return on time to every single other item that you can craft in a tier one workshop, a spoon is the worst thing that you can make. But how do I know that? Well, because of that handy dandy spreadsheet. And we're gonna pull that up and reference it right now. So the spreadsheet is divided into tabs. Raw resources, secondary resources, raw food, tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3 craft. Now the raw resources are basically the things that you can gather in the world. I've put value to them because I had lofty ideas of doing exactly what everybody else had done before me, which was taking a comparison of the value of the raw resource compared to the value of the finished crafted item. I learned quickly that that was a mistake. And there are a couple things here that I want to point out and definitely not overlook. And that is grains and seeds. They're not a crafted item. I consider them more of a byproduct of farming. You're going to have them, and you're going to have them in bulk you should be selling your extra seeds. They will make a ton of money. Whether or not they're the best thing in Medieval Dynasty to make money with is still a little undecided. There are other things that can make money better, but they are definitely worth selling every single season or at least every single year. So the secondary materials they do have value, but I very much consider them to be much like raw resources. You're going to be creating them anyway for your settlement. Your settlement depends on them in order to flourish. 
so you're going to be making them anyway. But I created three more columns so that we can determine what their value and contribution is compared to other crafted items that we utilize. So the first column added is craft time. How many seconds does it take to create the item? The second column is the craft value. And this is basically looking at the price, the base price to sell it, and the time that it takes to craft it. And the third column added is market value, where we take the base price along with the time and now factor the third variable weight. So now we're giving consideration to how long does it take to gather, how long does it take to craft, and how long does it take to sell, weight being directly relational to how long does it take to sell. So if we look at the craft value column, we can see that iron bars are the thing that we can make the fastest or the most money. But they've got a little bit of weight. So now we want to look at the market value. And here we can see that the lighter items are actually the best for marketing or selling. We can carry more of them. Theoretically, we can make more of them, carry more of them. We can sell them the fastest. So those would be the better option if you're looking to sell things quickly. And now we're going to look at the in hand tab. These are the items that you can make on your person without the use of a production bench. Things like stone tools or the simple bag. And if we sort the craft value column, we can see that simple bags are the best thing that we can make for the most money. But what can we sell the fastest? So now we're going to look at the market value and sort it. And then you can clearly see that. Simple bags are by far the best thing that we can make for the most money. But that's dependent upon your amount of leather. If you don't have a large surplus of leather, you're not going to make a lot of simple bags. So you might make stone knives. Maybe you don't have enough stone, so now you make wood hammers. This at least gives you an idea of what you can make for the most money, given the resources that you have on hand. And now we get to look at the Tier 1 tab, this being all the items that you can craft in any Tier 1 building. The location column is provided so you can sort it easily by that, but let's take a reference check and go look at those wooden spoons. So we're going to sort the column of name so that we can find spoons, and then we're going to see what their values are. So we're going to see that it's a uh, 0.75, so now we're going to sort the craft tab and see where does 0.75 fall into the list. Well, being 0.75, you can probably already assume it's not going to be very good, but here we can see that 0.75 clearly sucks. In fact, virtually everything else that you can make in a Tier 1 production facility is better than crafting wooden spoons. But surprisingly, trousers are one of the best. What about selling? So now we sort by market value and now we can see that things like arrows and bolts are actually the most marketable item we can craft at a tier one production facility but maybe you just don't have feathers so you need to go look at making wood vials but maybe you don't have enough wood so now you have to look at making coifs or maybe you need to look at flour and now we're going to look at tier two we're going to sort it by craft value, and we're going to see that there are some items at the bottom that are incomplete. And that's just some missing data down there. Feel free to add that data if you choose. I just didn't feel it was important enough. But clay vials and shovels are down at the bottom of the list. Shovels are heavy, though. So let's sort the column by market value, and let's see what we come up with. And we can see that basically vials, arrows, and bolts are number one. But again, maybe you don't have the resources, so you go to caps, or hats, or flatbread. And now we're going to look at tier three. Is there a repeating theme here? Let's find out. Craft items, hey, look at that. Spiked cudgels, or cudgel, depending upon how you want to pronounce it, are the best thing that you can make for your money. Followed by uh, juice, and beer. 
So here we can see that your tavern items, your juices and beers and wines, they're going to be the most lucrative thing you can make if weight is not a consideration. But let's see the market value. And based on the market value, we can see that it changes to the lighter items, making arrows and clothing and pies to be the best option that you can make. But if you play with the weight limit off, you have that selected in your settings, maybe it's best that you just make beers and wines. So, in summary, we can see that when we look at our in-hand items, things that we can craft the fastest for the most money, with weight not being an issue, simple bags are the best. If you still factor weight, simple bags are still the best. If we look at Tier 1 items that we can craft, trousers, gloves, some tools, are the best thing that you can make for the most money the fastest. But if you want to sell them, then, obviously, we're going to be looking at arrows and bolts, and that's going to be the common theme throughout every tier. So, Tier 2, looking for the items that we can make the most of the fastest, Clay vials actually come in at the top follow, or following the shovel, but shovels are heavy, so you may want to just switch to clay vials if you really need to, and then arrows and bolts and other tools. And at tier three, spiked cudgels and all your tavern items, juices, beers, wines, those are going to be the items that you can make the most money with, but the things that you can sell the most of are going to be your arrows, followed by your hats, and some pies. So there it is. That's the spreadsheet. Give you a breakdown of everything you can make the fastest in Medieval Dynasty, as it stands in 2023 anyway. If you have any feedback, if you have any comments to make, please put them down below. I'd love to hear from you. Especially if there's anything as far as inaccuracies relating to the content that I presented today. If you think there's something different that I missed, Please let us know so we can all be on the same page and have the same accurate information. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. And that's going to wrap up this video. I really appreciate you watching it until the end. If you enjoyed the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Of course, you can always ring the bell to get notifications of future videos that are posted. But also, don't forget to participate in the discussion in the comments below, because I genuinely want to hear from you. Again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.